Hello there. Just a moment. Peterson Orange Army with uh, some Peterson Elizabethan in there. And maybe some C&D Virginia gentlemen got mixed in to I uh, don't clean the dish between refilling it. So we're having another chat outside. This one is, as you may have surmised by the title, sort of a an after-action report of uh, of GunCon, which I was invited to by the team at Brownells, and let me tell you, they put on one hell of a show. I I. Feel a little weird just recording this on my phone and putting up the videos I do using an iPad because some of the people I met this weekend are just, I can't say enough great about them and the content that they put out. So we're going to go a little day by day, just kind of quick what happened from my point of view and, and what I thought of it. First of all, let me tell you, having, having a few kids is stressful enough and trying to uh, get them all ready for a four-hour car ride once you factor in bathroom breaks and whatnot. And then make sure you've got everything you need for yourself. I mean, it's a little, little, little stressful. See if I can, there we go, a little better kind of focus there. So we thankfully had a very uneventful car drive from home in lovely eastern Nebraska to the honestly adorable little town of Grinnell, Iowa. And just as a side note real quick, if you're ever planning to stay in Grinnell, Iowa, do not stay in the Best Western. Just just don't, don't do it. The guy that decorated my room, he had to have been missing a foot or something because everything was just, just cockeyed. There wasn't a... A, a level edge in that room. I also heard reports from friends that I met for the first time in person at GunCon who were also staying in Best Western. Looking at you, high caliber history. Um, of black mold in the rooms. So just, yeah, if you're ever need lodging in Grinnell, just don't go to Best Western. Spend the money and go to, like, somewhere else. Super 8's probably better. Anyways, we get there. And I kind of, you know, get settled in, unpacked. I load my, my personality into, into my satchel and make my way over to Brownells HQ. Then we, uh... Kind of milling about the retail store for a minute, and I go out front where some people are gathering in the lobby. Uh, this is where we're going to register. And I see some people that look like, who is that? I, I don't quite know. Yeah, I didn't quite recognize who I was looking at. Um, but that's that's okay. We uh, we all get registered, and we go out to the uh, the beer and the bar and cigar lounge. Uh, cleverly. T called the last round, uh, put up by uh, Volkorsten. Volkortsen. They do the the high end twenty two stuff. I've never been able to pronounce their name. Please don't hate me for it. So I'm hanging out out there. I 
and I'm approached by if if anyone that I met at GunCon is watching this, and I switch how we met with how I met someone else, I'm sorry. It's it's all still a blur. There was a lot of people. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I believe it was Perry from Brownells, Gunsmith Beard on Instagram, who approached me and introduced himself. And we've been talking the day before about, uh, about a project that I'm trying to work on. We will talk about that in a little bit. And af- after some, some conversation, he said, are you busy right now? Roy wants to meet you. As in Possum Fatback on Instagram, one of the, one of the Brownells big wigs. And Roy and I had been following each other on Instagram. Yeah, it's not like we hadn't talked before. But I'm still like, okay. And I'm just, it's, it's such a surreal thing. These people want to meet me. I'm, I'm not uh, an internet celebrity. So it, it was just, it was very awesome experience to finally meet all these people in person. Um, that's what was, I think it was on day two when Logan of High Caliber History and I started talking that we realized we were actually in adjacent rooms at Best Western. But after hanging out for a while, Roy rallied us up for a tour of the Brownells facility. Which a bunch of Bureau of Propaganda agents have posted videos of their tours and gone into loads of detail about it, so I am not going to. If you only follow me and you want more detail of the Brownells facility, you're just going to have to visit them and get the tour for yourself because I don't think I can properly articulate how awesome it is. An absolutely fantastic setup there. And as with meeting people, it's all still kind of a blur. So, after the tour, we hang out a little longer. And I decide I'm going to go turn in. On day two, that was range day, range and, and media, where all the all the attendees got to go to Brownells Range in the the Big Springs Shooting Complex, which is owned by Brownells, and that was just wild. Uh, I was kind of just taking it all in because this is my first industry event. I didn't even think about that until it was mentioned to me by someone. You know, well, they said, well, this is an industry event. I'm like, I didn't even think about that. That's not helping with like me keeping a lid on, on everything I'm feeling right now. So I'm just kind of milling about, seeing what's going on. I'm taking it all in before actually playing with anything and the first gun i actually shot there was uh, i forget the model of it from new frontier armory it was a nine mil ar type pcc that took mp5 mags and my immediate right off the bat impression was i get it now i get why people use these now Oh, pardon me. And so that was just a neat, accurate little gun. I talked to those guys for a bit and then uh, went on my way to the next table over, which happened to be Heckler and Coke. And I now feel like I am in a very small group of people who can say the first HK they have ever fired. I've handled HKs before. I don't, you know, I don't live under a rock but I had never fired one before. So I can say the first HK I've ever fired was an MP7. And nothing against everyone else that was there, but that was the coolest five rounds I shot all day. I 
It was also the first time in, I think, 12 or 13 years that I'd fired a machine gun. So that scratched an itch that sorely needed to be scratched. I then hung around for a little bit, trying to process what uh, what's going on around me. There's a lot, even if you're not an ADHD kid. And I, I hung out with Doc of uh, Blackout coffee company and I forget what he was serving on range day but it was delicious I'm not a black coffee kind of person and I still churched this up with one creamer and two sugars but that's the closest to black I've ever black coffee that I've ever really liked that was super good um and then lunch showed up and everyone kind of gravitated to where I was hanging out so I took advantage of the situation and walked the line to get up close to tables without crowds. And I ended up with uh, the fellows from Elevated Silence and talked to them about suppressors for a bit. This is another first for me. I've, I, before then, I had never fired a, a suppressed rifle, pistol, anything. So when the range went hot again, the first thing I got a hold of was their, I, I believe it's, it's not released yet. I believe they're still fine-tuning it. It's a 9mm titanium suppressor, and they happen to have it on an MP5. So, of course, I'm interested. And now, granted, first time I've ever shot a suppressor, so I have no basis of comparison. But holy cow, that was quiet. I feel like I can still say that because you hear the suppressed shots all day long, but this thing was super duper quiet. Um, then uh, I tried their, their 5.56 suppressor on a BRN-180, and I had not fired a BRN-180 before either, and that... That gun just kind of hits different. I, I definitely feel the need for one now. It might be a bit, because I've got some other projects in the works, but I, I, think I, I think there is a BRN-180 in my future. If you see me swatting around like a moron, there's a fly bothering me, so please excuse that. Um, there was also Fax and Firearms was there, and I shot their 8.6 Blackout. That thing was amazing. It's a bit of a thumper. It, the recoil wasn't bad, but it's still, it had more than I expected at the same, but at the same time, it was extremely pleasant to shoot. Um, very, very accurate. The rifling in there, they, they told me, before you shoot it, look down the bore, and I did. And looking at the speed of the twist, it's a one in three twist. And I, I said to the guy, it's a spring. It looks, it seriously looks like it's a spring inside the bore. That's how tight this rifling is. But the 8.6 was amazing. I need to do some more research on that. Because I'd heard of it, but I haven't really looked at it. I mean, it's not my gig. So it might become my gig. It depends on what, this, what I find when I start reading about it. One of the things that interested me the most was a currently unreleased product from Law Tactical. Called, we all know their, their folding stock mechanism. Well, now they have... They're, they're, in, they're developing and, and should be soon-ish releasing... They call it the ARIC. The AR Integral Carrier, I think, is what the acronym stands for. Basically, the way the Law mechanism works with the design of an AR-15 
If the stock is folded and you already have a round chambered, you can fire, but it's not going to cycle. So you only get that one shot. This allows you to fire the entire magazine with the stock folded. So it, with this simple little conversion, an oversimplified explanation could be that it has turned, it can turn any AR-15 into a poor man's MCX. Um, that's probably not very accurate at all, and it is certainly a oversimplification, but that is the impression I got, and I'm sticking with it until someone tells me otherwise. It's super cool, and I want one. I know we're about the, the more classic stuff here, but this is super cool, and I want one. <laughs> um, after the range day wrapped up, there was there was rain, and then there was sun. I got sunburned. It was, it was a great day. But we went back to HQ, had dinner at in the bar and cigar tent, and just kind of general hangout. There was some there was some great beer there, some great. Uh, dissident cigars uh, were I uh, first time I'd even heard of them, much less tried one, and they were fantastic. I need to get more of those. Met even more people. I believe it was day two. Maybe, maybe, maybe the end of day one. I forget exactly when when Logan of High Caliber History and I started started talking and just generally hanging out. Um, went back, just kind of meet and greet, hang out, have dinner. Good times were had by all. Saturday, the last day of the event, all of the vendors are set up in a corner of uh, Brownell's warehouse. As well as that's where we're set up for the actual gun con panel discussion. Which was, it was an experience. See, I, whenever somebody at a, at a table or a podium says, is there any questions, my mind just goes blank. So I didn't actually ask anything. But it was, it was very interesting to sit and listen to the questions and the panelists' responses as well as get more face time with the individual vendors that were there. And I immediately regretted not playing with more of what was available on Friday, um, specifically thinking about LMT and their grenade launcher they had. But a great, great experience. And after, after the panel discussion, which was it, was, it was two hours. It was a very, very interesting two hours. There are several YouTube channels you can go to watch the discussion. Um, the Gun Collective being one. I believe We Like Shooting was another. And I, honest to God, I feel bad. I forget the other two. So, if you want to see the panel discussion, go to one of those channels and check it out. I feel like if you're watching me, you probably have already watched them because they're so much bigger and have such a farther reach than me. And then after that, just more hangout kind of party in the, at the tent. Again, meeting even more people. I made a lot of friends this weekend. And the... Really got a feel for the, the, the family aspect of, of Brownell's Bureau of Propaganda. I've been very proud to be a member of the Bureau since it, I, I was first brought in. And it just... I, ah, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. It's, just, it's such a great organization. If you're interested in becoming a Bureau of Propaganda field agent, simply 
with your posts on Instagram, tag Brownells and use hashtag Bureau of Propaganda. Just keep doing it. Don't get discouraged. They will notice you. And I'd love to have you as part of the family. Um, I understand this video has just been kind of me rambling. The whole weekend is still kind of a blur. They had this really good uh, cherry hard cider there, and I drank probably more than my share of it, so you understand why a lot of this is kind of a blur. But it was fantastic meeting all these people. A high caliber history. Kurt the gunsmith. Uh, possum fat back gunsmith beard. Smoke and pew. So many people. Mr. Guns and Gear and Rapid Fire Rachel. Met both of them. Great people in real life. As well as on their YouTubes, of course. And uh, I just, I, I really feel the need to, to really up my game with my YouTube videos. So that is, like I've said this whole time, that that's an ongoing thing as far as me updating, getting an actual camera and maybe actually shooting on camera. It's not going to happen anytime soon. But I'm working on it, I promise. Thanks for tuning in and listening to me ramble about my incredible weekend out at Brownells. And I'm already looking forward to the next one. And that's, that's what I got for right now. I appreciate everyone that made GunCon for me a possibility. GunCon in general a possibility. And I appreciate every single one of you for listening to my nonsense for liking the videos and subscribing. Um, in addition to this, please, if you want more of my nonsense on a predictable, regular basis, go to Instagram, follow pipe.guy, and that's, that's what I got for today. Uh, next week, should be Tuesday or Wednesday, we will have another tabletop gun discussion. With the, with the green blanket. and It's going to be something a little more modern. Something we're, we haven't done before on the channel. So stay tuned for that. As always. Again, I've said it like three times now. I appreciate y'all tuning in. And we will catch you next time.